Good evening. Welcome to this Maundy Thursday service at Newton Presbyterian Church. As you can see, this is not Newton Presbyterian Church. This is the Holder and Greesmer family dining room. We will now, and for the foreseeable future, be taping segments of our worship services from various people's homes. The session has made this decision in an effort to keep the greatest number of people safe, to take our part in making sure that people aren't becoming infected, infected with the coronavirus. We recognize that this is different, but we also recognize that God is a spirit, and those who worship him must worship in spirit and in truth. And we are not required to be in the same physical space. Neither we who are worshiping nor those who are recording the services. So, join me for this night of preparing for Good Friday. Now let us begin with the call to worship, which is printed in the bulletin. We sit at table with the Lord. We share a meal with our Savior. Though he serves us, we will betray him. Though he loves us, we will crucify him. Enter then to the upper room. Let us go in to sit with the Lord. Now let us join together in our first hymn, hymn number 92, Beneath the Cross of Jesus. On Maundy Thursday, maybe more than any other day of the year, except for perhaps tomorrow, Good Friday, we need to bring our sins before the Lord so the Lord can forgive them. Let us trust in God's promise to forgive every wrong and let us come before our God first with the prayer of confession that's printed in the bulletin, and then coming before our God in silent prayer. Lord, when we come tonight, we come because your pain has reached through the walls we put up, and we have heard your cry. Even as our hearts are touched, we wonder why 
Why do you come for us? Why do you reach out to us when we have failed you again and again? Why do you continue to reach out to us when even we know that we will fail you again? And your only answer is that you love us. When we hear, we are touched and taught again that your love is real, the kind we must learn again and again. Help us, Lord, form our hearts aright. Cause your own self to grow in us so that we will live in you and no longer try to live on our own. Forgive our sins and take our sinning away from us. This we pray in the name of the one who saves us, Jesus the Christ. Amen. Amen. Hear the good news. This statement is completely reliable and can be trusted in every instance. Christ Jesus died to save sinners. While we were yet in sin, Christ was born for us. Christ lived for us. Christ suffered and died for us. Christ rose for us. Christ reigns in power over us. Tonight, Christ prays for us. Brothers and sisters, believe the good news of the gospel. In Jesus Christ, we are forgiven. And as forgiven people, we are freed to live new lives. And our best guide to, to those new lives comes to us in the law of our God. They came to Jesus and said, what is the great commandment? He said, you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind and all your strength. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. On these two depend all the law and the prophets. We know that when we are following these, we are walking in the footsteps of our God. As we prepare to hear God's word, let us prepare our hearts and minds in prayer. Gracious and loving God, we come before you tonight asking for your Holy Spirit. Give us your spirit so these words that are ancient to us live anew in our hearts. Let them Kindle a fire in us that lights our path back to you. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Our responsive reading tonight comes from Psalm 116 with various readings. They are printed in the bulletin. Let us join together 
reading responsively. I love the Lord because he has heard my voice and my supplications. Because he inclined his ear to me, therefore I will call on him as long as I live. What shall I return to the Lord for all his bounty to me? I will lift up the cup of salvation and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. Precious in the sight of the Lord is the death of his faithful ones. O Lord, I am your servant. I am your servant, the child of your serving girl. You have loosed my bonds. I will offer to you a thanksgiving sacrifice and call on the name of the Lord. I will pay my vows to the Lord in the presence of all his people. In the courts of the house of the Lord, in your midst, O Jerusalem, praise the Lord. Now let us join together in hymn number 93, Ah, Holy Jesus. Our second reading comes from the book of Exodus, reading the 12th chapter, the first 14 verses. Listen for the word of the Lord. The Lord said to Moses and Aaron in the land of Egypt, This month shall mark for you the beginning of months. It shall be the first month of the year for you. Tell the whole congregation of Israel that on the tenth of this month they are to take a lamb for each family, a lamb for each household. If a household is too small for a whole lamb, it shall join its closest neighbor in obtaining one. The lamb shall be divided in proportion to the number of people who eat of it. 
your lamb shall be without blemish, a year old male. You shall take it from the sheep or from the goats. You shall keep it until the 14th day of this month. Then the whole assembled congregation of Israel shall slaughter it at midnight. They shall take some of the blood and shall put it on the two doorposts and the lintel of the houses in which they eat it. They shall eat the lamb that same night. They shall eat it roasted over the fire with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. Do not eat any of it raw or boiled in water, but roast it over the fire with its head, legs, and inner organs. You shall let none of it remain until the morning. Anything that remains until the morning you shall burn. This is how you shall eat it. Your loins girded, your sandals on your feet, and your staff in your hand, and you shall eat it hurriedly. It is is the Passover of the Lord. For I will pass through the land of Egypt that night, and I will strike down every firstborn in the land of Egypt, both human beings and animals, on all the gods of Egypt, I will execute judgment. I am the Lord. The blood shall be a sign for you on the houses where you live, when I see the blood, I will pass over you, and no plague shall destroy you when I strike the land of Egypt. This day shall be a day of remembrance for you. You shall celebrate it as a festival to the Lord. Throughout your generations, you shall observe it as a perpetual observance. Our reading from the Gospel tonight comes from the Gospel of John, reading the 13th chapter, the first 17 verses, and then verse 31 through 35. Listen for the word of the Lord. Now before the festival of the Passover, Jesus knew that his hour had come to depart from this world and go to the Father. Having loved his own who were in the world, he loved them to the end. The devil had already put it into the heart of Judas, son of Simon Iscariot, to betray him. And during supper, Jesus, knowing that the Father had given all things into his hands, and that he had come from God and was going to God, got up from the table took off his outer robe and tied a towel around himself. Then he poured water into a basin and began to wash the disciples' feet and to wipe them with the towel that was tied around him. He came to Simon Peter, who said to him, Lord, are you going to wash my feet? Jesus answered, You do not know what I am doing but later you will understand. Jesus, Peter said to him, You will never wash my feet. Jesus answered, Unless I wash you, you have no share with me. Simon Peter said to him, Lord, not my feet also, but also my hands and my head. Jesus said to him, One who is bathed does not need to wash except for his feet, but is entirely clean. And you are clean, though not all of you. For he knew who was to betray him. For this reason he said, Not all of you are clean. After he had washed their feet, had put on his robe, and had returned to the table, he said to them, Do you know what I have done to you? You call me teacher and Lord. And you are right, for that is what I am. So if I, your Lord and teacher, have washed your feet, you also ought to wash one another's feet. For I have set you an example 
that you also should do as I have done to you. Truly, truly, I say unto you, servants are not greater than their master, nor are messengers greater than the one who sent them. If you know these things, you are blessed if you do them. And when he had gone out, Jesus said, Now the Son of Man has been glorified, and God has been glorified in him. If God has been glorified in him, God will also glorify him in himself and will glorify him at once. Little children, I am with you only a little longer. You will look for me, and as I said to the Jews, so now I say to you, where I am going, you cannot come. I give you a new commandment, that you love one another. Just as I have loved you, you also should love one another. By this, everyone will know that you are my disciples, if you have love for one another. And may the Lord add a rich blessing to our hearing and understanding of this God's holy word. Amen. Maundy Thursday. The term is from Old English. It, it is a bastardization of a new commandment, mandatum, I give you. That new commandment was the one that Jesus gave to his disciples to love one another. And tonight we see some of the aspects of that. First, we start with the Israelites. And it's the story of the, the Passover. Moses had gone down into Egypt to bring the children of Israel up out of Egypt to serve the Lord in the way that God intended. It's a whole series of plagues. Water is turned to blood. Frogs, locusts, all flies, all kinds of, of things. None are, are harsh enough to get the Pharaoh to give way. So finally, God decides the last plague will be the death of every firstborn. Whether of animals or of families, death of the firstborn. And he created a way for the angel of death to pass over, quite literally pass over the houses of the children of Israel. And here in the 12th chapter of Exodus, he talks about it. This shall be a remembrance for you. This shall be the way you are to do this. This shall be the way, and it's very detailed, what kind of lamb, whether from the sheep or the goats, how old, how to prepare it, what can be left over, nothing. Eat it hurriedly with unleavened bread and bitter herbs. So frequently I, I use this passage with my students and I, we look at that and, and very occasionally somebody gets it right. Wait, they haven't even done it yet and he's telling them how to celebrate it in the future. And I say, good job. If I was a little braver, I might say, well, go well done, good and faithful servant. 
But what's important is God did know what was coming. That this would become a ceremony. That this would become something that they would do for time immemorial. The Israelites were saved, but they also would always look back to that moment and be reminded of the way that God was for them. That God reached down, intervened in human history, and changed their future. Much the same way, Jesus went into an upper room with his disciples. And he said and did strange things. He bound himself with a cloth. He wiped their feet. And then we know he took them through what we call the Lord's Supper, a gift of a table set with the simplest, simplest of elements, bread, wine, something that anyone in Judea could easily procure, except the Lord of heaven and earth said, this will be my body. This will be my blood. This is a gift I give to you. Of course, in doing that, he too was doing things that for the last almost 2,000 years, we've been repeating. And we will repeat them tonight. The disciples could not know any more than the Israelites could know on the night before the Passover. What would happen? They could not know that they would survive this night. They could not know that they would go out with a ministry to remind people of the love that Jesus had shared. That they would go and show people what it meant to love each other. The Lord came to them, saying, This is a new commandment. Love each other as I have loved you. And then gave them a model that would take them back year after year, and month after month, and week after week, to remember the way that their Lord had loved them. And because they remembered the way that their Lord had loved them, they were able to see the way that the Lord is loving them. And now we are caught in the midst of a terrible virus. Another 600 people died today in New York City alone. We are afraid to go out of our houses. We are afraid to be with the ones we love. 
we are figuring out ways to see each other through YouTube or Twitch or Zoom or a dozen other programs. And the Lord who was faithful with the disciples, the Lord who was faithful with the Israelites, that same Lord will be faithful with us. Almost a month ago, I preached to the Presbytery of Boston. And a big chunk of a very short sermon was about Newton Presbyterian's time kind of in our own little bit of the wilderness. And I told them, we did not want to worship at 1.30 in the afternoon. We did not want to worship in someone else's chapel or basement. We did not want to figure out how to do things without a gorgeous worship space. And the Lord blessed us in every case. The Lord showed us gifts for leadership we did not know were there. The Lord showed us what it meant to love each other when we were broken. The Lord showed us what it meant to be the people of God. Or the most important thing was our devotion to our God and our devotion to each other. I know that sounds like two things, but it's really not. They're fused. And that's why Jesus said, these two commandments, they are like each other. We do not know what God is teaching us now. I do not believe that a year from now, I will be celebrating a Maundy Thursday service in my living room. But I don't know. Maybe what God is showing us is new people with gifts that we hadn't even looked for. Maybe what God is showing us is new ways to reach out into each other's lives. Maybe what God is showing us is that there are a multitude of ways that we can use technology to reach out and love people because that's tonight's commandment. Megan's brother died. Prayed about that on Sunday. It hurts. It hurts that she can't come to church. It hurts that we can't give her a hug. It hurts that we can't let her cry on shoulders that want so badly to be there for her. You know me, I love our children. I'm not seeing them. They're, they're literally growing and not before our eyes, but out of sight. Yet we are being given chances to learn new things. We are being given opportunities to find new ways to be Christ's 
reconciling community in this world. Our God comes to us this night and sets a table before us with simple elements that he calls his very body and blood. He lifts us up through the Holy Spirit to have a meal with him where our souls are nourished at a table in the kingdom of our God. What could be a better way to know Christ's love. So tonight, in all the various places we are, let us stop looking at the pain we are feeling and start saying, what new things can we bring through our love for one another? The love that Jesus tells us shows people who he is. That is always the task of Maundy Thursday. It's just right now. It's a lot sharper and in clearer focus. Amen. Let us join together now in a time of prayer. Gracious and loving God, we ask that you would come before us and draw us in the Spirit's tether. We know that you have intervened in human history time and again, whether with the Israelites or with the disciples or with believers across the ages. Because of this, we know that we can come to you. So, Lord, tonight we come holding our hearts in our hands. We do not know what the future holds. And while we know it is in your hands, we do not know your will. And we ask simply that you give us hearts and minds that would glory in your will rather than in our own. We ask, Lord, for your, not only your guidance, but for your loving kindness, for your your generosity of spirit, your presence. Be with us. Let those people who love to come together, let them know your presence. Bless your church. Bless our local and state and national and international leaders. Give them wisdom and guidance and a heart for your people. Because all people, Lord, are yours. All these things, Lord, we pray in the name and for the sake of Christ Jesus, our Lord, who taught us to pray, our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, 
on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Friends, this is the joyful feast of the people of God. Scripture tells us that men and women shall come from east and west and north and south to eat at the table of their God, to eat the bread after which there is no hunger, to drink the cup after which there is no thirst. Our Lord Jesus invites all who believe in the saving promise of his name to come to this table, a table that is spread out on literally dozens of tables around Massachusetts, maybe even further, to sit and receive gifts they can get nowhere else, to receive a meal that is shared with believers across time and space. Our Lord invites all who believe in the saving promise of his name to come to this table, and I, ministering in his name, invite you. Come, people of God, receive the gifts of God prepared for you. As we prepare, let us prepare our hearts and minds through prayer. Gracious God, we ask now for your Holy Spirit. By the power of your Spirit, lift us up for a true meal shared with your Son in your kingdom. Strengthen us, nourish our very souls through this meal, and then send us forth, strengthened to do your will. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Scripture tells us that on the night of his arrest, our Lord Jesus took bread, and after he had given thanks, he broke it, saying, This is my body, broken for you. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup, saying, This cup is the new covenant poured out in my blood for the remission of sins. As often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you proclaim the death of the Lord until he comes again. The gifts of God for the people of God. Come, the table has been prepared for you. Gracious and loving God, we thank you for this meal shared in your spirit with believers spread across time and space. 
we know this binds us together in the church universal. And we know that through it, you strengthen us in our very being so that we may be your true people. Now send us forth in your will and in your love. This we ask in Jesus' name. Amen. Now let us join together in our affirmation of faith, reading together the Nicene Creed, which is printed in the bulletin. We believe in one God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and of all things visible and invisible, and in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only begotten Son of God, begotten of the Father before all worlds, God of God, light of light, very God of very God, begotten, not made, being of one substance with the Father, by whom all things were made, who for us men and for our salvation came down from heaven and was incarnate by the Holy Spirit of the Virgin Mary and was made man and was crucified also for us under Pontius Pilate. He suffered and was buried, and the third day he rose again according to the scriptures and ascended into heaven and sitteth on the right hand of the Father. And he shall come again with glory to judge both the quick and the dead, whose kingdom shall have no end. And we believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord and giver of life, who proceedeth from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son together is worshipped and glorified, who spoke by the prophets. And we believe in one holy, Catholic, and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the remission of sins, and we look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Now let us join together in hymn number 98, O Sacred Head, Now Wounded.
Now let us go forth. We do not know what God is doing with us in this time, but we do know God has always been faithful. That allows us to put our trust in the living God and know that we will come through these days with lessons of how to love. Now may the grace, mercy, and peace of the triune God, creator, redeemer, and spirit that moves among us, be with us all, both now, henceforth, and forevermore, world without end. Amen.